At a former Soviet military base outside of Lviv in western Ukraine, about 300 U.S. Army paratroopers from the 173rd Airborne Brigade, based in Vicenza, Italy, are training the Ukrainian National Guard as part of Operation Fearless Guardian. All right, rock and roll, boys. Let's go. We're going to go right over here, okay? The six-month U.S. training mission, which officially began April 20th, is focused both on teaching individual skills as well as modeling the institution of the Ukrainian National Guard on the U.S. military. Yeah, it's a very top-heavy kind of traditional Soviet methodology in terms of, of command and control at the highest levels, whereas what we're trying to teach is really mission command. So things like squad leaders at the small unit level of nine or ten guys exercising initiative, making decisions on the fly, is what we teach uh, and what makes us so successful is is non-commissioned officers able to kind of seize the initiative, junior officers, junior officers able to seize the initiative, and I think that's been a really big mindset change and, and something that they've really embraced. They are at war right now, and they are fighting for their sovereignty. But as we look at the overall scheme of what they're doing here, it is definitely to professionalize their force with the right tools and aspects of what they can apply later, even if this conflict goes on or if it stops. And Russia, you know, the Russian separatists retreat back into their own sovereign country. Um, it's going to take some time, but the true growth and development of the force, we have planted the seed of how to be successful as a fighting force. But when, we're, when you're downrange and you're on patrol and you take contact, I like to take it off. Oh. Many of the U.S. paratroopers are themselves combat veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan. And many of the Ukrainian soldiers are fresh off the battlefields of the Donbass, some after more than a year on the front lines. <laughs> Consequently, one of the greatest challenges that the U.S. soldiers must overcome is applying the lessons they've learned from counterinsurgency operations in Iraq and Afghanistan to prepare Ukrainian troops for the type of combat they'll soon be facing in eastern Ukraine. You know, a lot of them are seasoned veterans. Um, most of them got back from the ATO about a month ago, um, and then they're they're staged, ready to go back uh, almost once they complete this training training event. A lot of them have been out in different places and have some experience that they bring here, and uh, you can definitely tell those guys they have a lot more discipline and they keep the guys focused on the training as well as they want to pay attention a lot more and they have a lot more uh, a lot more focus on the things that matter so we're trying to do everything to keep these guys alive so just building up the basic soldier skills helps them. So like we're, we are, we teach this stuff to our army all the time, but we're trying to mix in from what they have so it doesn't seem like some just random American coming over here and teaching them some crap they, they see in Iraq and Afghanistan. Because everybody keeps saying, oh, back in Iraq and Afghanistan, and these guys like just, oh, there they go talking about the Taliban again. Like that's not their war. So, I, I, you know, trench warfare going to what we fought in Afghanistan, um, yes, two completely different things. Have I ever, have I ever taken out a tank? No, I haven't. Um, have I ever, uh, you know, been accurately engaged with artillery barrages? No. Um, but the, the mindset and the lesson learned through uh, through Afghanistan, so the mortar attacks, uh, the IEDs, the checkpoints, uh, we we can learn from them and they can learn from us, and I think that's what sets up us for success. So you start out by the neck. То есть начинаем мы с шеи. You take your hands and go all the way around. Держим свои руки вот таким образом. And sweep up. И потом смотрим, есть ли кровь или нет. Checking your hands for blood. Вот проверяем руки, есть ли кровь. Oh, they're very grateful. They one of the things they always mention in uh, in a review is how how much they appreciate the medical knowledge we're teaching them. And um, like even like I'll be like so we were yelling at them, right? And you think that oh this guy's you know I hate this guy he's he's so mean, but they actually they they feel better. They feel like well like when they're done they feel a lot more accomplished, and um, it really makes me want to teach them more. And because we're bringing enthusiasm and they're bringing enthusiasm, I think all around the attitude is actually really awesome here. Last night we did a little uh, church ceremony for one of their fallen soldiers that got killed a year ago in the ATO. 
when you sit in a memorial ceremony uh, from that, you know, it brings back memories of memorial ceremonies from Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, you're able to share the, the, the hardships of, uh, of combat and the reality combat brings. I think initially they were a little bit standoffish at, within the ranks themselves just because, hey, why, why is somebody else coming to train me? Um, I've been to the ATO, I've seen what's going on there. But then when they got into the program and they started seeing why we were here and the capabilities that we could provide them, I think they really took ownership of it. Make sure you keep aiming at the same spot and don't take your, your cheek off the bus stop, okay? That doesn't feel very good, okay? Let's the points. Okay, and you spread the legs out. Okay, and then you pull them back like that. And then you can conduct your search. For the U.S. soldiers, the training mission in Ukraine marks a return to a Cold War mindset. Soldiers are focused on training for a conventional state-on-state -state conflict. And they are also adjusting to the type of media attention that comes with training exercises like Fearless Guardian. 